us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your presence here. Lord, let your Holy Spirit touch our hearts this morning, open our hearts to your word and song. Lord, that we might receive what you'd have for us today. We just thank you so much for your presence right here. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. 
offering time, let's remember what God's word says. Give cheerfully, give your tithe, that the windows of heaven will be open and his blessings poured out upon us. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you today that we have the opportunity to give back what you have given to us so generously. Lord, I ask that each heart just give according to you have blessed them. Lord, that there may be uh, blessings overflowing in your house. We give you praise today for it's all in Jesus' name. Amen.
Turn, if you will, in your Bibles this morning to Psalms. Psalms chapter 25. Brother Bill's not here this morning, so we missed the children's sermon, but he said he would be back next week. And I'm going to be honest with you. He asked me to take care of it, and I didn't do it. I tell you what, forgot all about it. And uh, so don't tell him that, okay? <laughs> what? He don't need to know. He just don't need to know. I couldn't have done it near as good as he did anyhow. So I, I said, well, the Lord knew I didn't need to do it. Verses 4 and 5 of Psalm 25. The Word of God says, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. O you, I wait all the day. On you, I wait all the day. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your loving kindness and your mercy and your grace. And God, we just thank you that you're in control. And Lord, today, show us the things that we need in our lives so that our lives might be in the center of your will, that your perfect will might be done in our life, that we can go out from here today excited about the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we give you all the praise and glory, for it's in Christ's precious name we ask these things. Amen. I've been talking about traveling down life's road many times many times this year and we're traveling and as we travel down life road we find that we need some things there's always some things that we need in our life that we come up with and we fail to get have you ever been on vacation and you you forgot something well i never will forget uh me and brother forgot his name Never will forget what happened, though. <laughs> His name is Brother Lum. Lum, L-U-M. We went out on a camping trip one night, and we were going to go all night fishing. And it was cold. It was one of those cold nights. Somebody said we were crazy, but, you know, we had taken a roll of toilet paper and put it in a gallon can and fill it full of alcohol and that uh, toilet paper to act like a wick, and we'd light it, and we'd sit there around that and fish at night. Well, it got cold. We was out on his barge, and it got cold. We was on Lake Palestine, and uh, it was kind of dark out there. We had our lights hanging over the barge over water, and I had my stuff. I packed my stuff, and I uh, put on my coat and my uh, heavy pants, and a little bit later, my brother and I was sitting there around that fire and on his barge there around that can, and we heard him say, oh, no, and I said, Something, something wrong, Brother Lum? No. Should have done it myself. I said, what, what happened? He said, well, my wife didn't pack my long-sleeve shirt. She put an extra set of boxer shorts in there. <laughs> I said, well, you know, that's not going to keep you very warm. <laughs> and he, all night long, he was grumbling and mumbling and about that. And he sat around that fire ruin his whole fishing trip. I said, next time you'll pack for yourself. But we're always needing some essentials, aren't we? And uh, in life. Now, the psalmist says he desired God to show him the essentials for a successful journey as a Christian. As a Christian. A successful journey in life. Now, let me tell you something. A successful journey in life starts by you knowing Jesus Christ, okay? You've got to know Jesus Christ if you're going to be successful. It doesn't matter how much money you make in life. It doesn't matter if you're the richest man on earth in life. If you do not know Jesus Christ, you're a failure. Your failure. You'll die and go to a place called hell because you weren't successful in finding 
Jesus Christ. The Bible says if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, man, you've made nothing in life. So it starts with salvation in Christ. It starts with the goodness of God as God leads you and leads his people to repentance. That's what you need today. If you don't know Jesus Christ right now, if you died without Christ right now, where would you spend eternity? Think about that. You need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior on the journey of life. And if you don't have Christ, then you're in a mess. You need to know Jesus Christ, first of all. And once we become a Christian, once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we need some things to successfully complete that journey, submissive to God's will. Look what he says. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul in verse 1. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. And then he says, show me your way, O Lord, in verse 4. Now the word ways I talked about last week is a, a road, a course of life. Show me your course for me, O Lord. Show me the road that you have for me, O Lord. This morning, God wants you to be successful in life. He wants you to know how he works and moves in your life. And that's what the psalmist wanted to know. He said, Lord, I need a personal acquaintance of your ways. Of your ways. To be successful in life, let me tell you something. You need to know God's way in your life. Now, a young lady come to me not, well, a few years ago, and she was about to get married. And she said, well, preacher, you see, I'm going to marry, let's just call his name John. You, you don't know him that way. She said, I'm, I want to marry John, but preacher, he doesn't go to church. What do you think? I said, don't marry him. Get away from him. Let him go. For the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked. And you're in a life of misery. If you marry someone that's not saved, not born again, not a Christian. And she said, oh, but I I think I can. And I knew what was coming. Change him. It didn't work out. Mary wanted to know about Jesus. She wanted to know his will for her life. She wanted a personal acquaintance with Jesus. But let me tell you something. When we want a personal acquaintance with Jesus, we've got to do what he says uh, to do. Moses prayed in Ezekiel 13, or 33, 13, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now your ways that I might know thee. Show me your way that I might know thee. Paul says, I want to know Christ. You see? Now the psalmist in 103.7 says, He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of God. Now, listen to that. Moses and the children of God saw God's ways. In the pillar of fire by night, in the cloud by day, they saw God's guiding them. They saw God's ways. They were acquainted with God. They were acquainted with his ways. And today, most of us, we may know God as our Savior. You may be here this morning, 
I hope you are, and you know God as your Savior, but you have never experienced His ways in your life. In other words, you've never heard Him guide you and guard you and protect you. You've never followed His will for your life. You see, uh, Moses experienced God's acts. Oh, he saw God act in the bringing of them water and the bringing of them food and the bringing of the uh, splitting of the Red Sea. The psalmist said, Lord, show me your ways. Show me your ways. I want to be personally acquainted with them. Now there's a passage of scripture that has stirred my heart. It's in 2 Chronicles 16, 9. It says this, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. You see, I believe God desires to show himself to his people. He's not hiding his perfect will for your life. He wants to show you his will for your life. He wants you to know him and have a, a, in a personal way in your life. He wants to see uh, what he can do in your life. Now, you don't need to just hear about it. The psalmist didn't want to just hear about it. He said, I want you to show me, Lord, your ways. I want to be acquainted with your ways. So there ought to be in our life this morning a personal acquaintance with God's way. Once you're saved, to understand how God moves in our life. And then there's a powerful experience in God's ways. Now, the psalmist talked about or talked with God. And God showed himself in a personal way of knowledge to God. Now, 1 Chronicles 17, 20, he said, O Lord, there is none like thee. Isn't that wonderful? Neither is there any God besides thee. According to all that we have heard with our ears. Now, all the works of God, all the things that God did, was enough to convince David of the greatness of God. He said, God, I have seen, I have heard, and oh Lord, there is none like you. We sing a little song, there is none like you, Lord. There is none like you. But have we ever experienced that greatness of God? Have we ever seen what God could do in our lives? He wants to show us His will. He wants us to be experience His power in our life. You know what? I have never seen a great revival in my day. I have heard about the great revivals of the past. I, I have read about them in books of the great revivals that happened years ago. But I have never seen a great revival in our country in my lifetime. And I'm 64 years old, folks. I've never seen that happen. Oh, I've seen a stirring of the Word of God. I've seen some uh, people get saved, and I've seen people come to the altar. But the great revivals where hundreds were saved, uh, lives were changed, whole towns came to Jesus Christ. I have heard about it. I was reading a book about the great revival in Detroit, where Detroit... Years ago, had a revival in the whole town. Thousands upon thousands. I believe it said 26,000 people came to know Jesus Christ. Wonderful revival. I've heard about them, but I've never seen one. 
And I would say, like the psalmist, Lord, show me your ways, O Lord. I want to be personally acquainted with you. I want to experience your power in my life. As I travel along life's highway, as I travel along life's journey, as a Christian, Lord, show me. Let me see your will for my life. Oh, he says, show us your ways and the will of God. You know, God's will, he said, look at it, teach me thy paths. He said, Lord, I, I want your will in my life. Teach me what you have for me. Now, I believe God has a certain path for our life, you know. I'm not here by accident. Somebody asked me the other day, Preacher, have you ever desired to go somewhere else and preach at another church? And I got to thinking about that, and I said, Well, I've never felt led to, so I don't guess I've ever desired to. I, I said, I'm not against that, but, you know, I said... If God's not in it, then I don't want to be a part of it. You know, I think if God ever comes to me and says, listen, I want you to go over here and do this, I'll go. But, you know, just to go somewhere else, to be going somewhere else out of God's will, I know one thing, God led me here years ago. It wasn't an accident. And I said, Lord, if you ever want me to leave, show me, and I will go. And he never has. Oh, I've had some calling from uh, nicer churches and bigger churches, I suppose. But, you know, bigness is not what it's all about. You need to be in the center of God's will. And that's what David desired. He says, show me and then teach me your paths. And I believe he's got a certain path. For each one. And he's asking God here, Lord, show me what path to take in life. The psalmist knows that, you know what, there's many paths out there. There's all kinds of ways you can take. But God, I believe, has a certain path just for David and just for you and just for me. And you know what? God's path is always the best path. I believe if you, young lady and young man, if you ask God to show you the right husband or the person you're supposed to marry, then I believe if you're honestly desiring God to do that, he will. He will. Somebody asked me one time, how'd you ever find Rhonda? I said, I was just praying and she was praying and we bumped into each other and that's it. God showed us. He put us together. I, I couldn't have had a better wife, a preacher's wife. And when I wasn't a preacher starting out, but God knew the path that he had for us, you see. He knows more than we do. Aren't you glad that God knows everything about you even before it happens? What you going to be doing next year? God knows that. He knows everything about you. Listen what Paul said in Ephesians, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. If you're going to make it through life, you have to find God's will and get in on his will for your life. For the church at Colossae, in Colossians 1.19, Paul prayed, Be filled with the knowledge of his will. Now the tragedy of most believers is we will live and die without ever knowing God's will for our life. Isn't that a tragedy? To live your life, oh yeah, you can be saved, but not know the will of God. You see, some of us don't know, want to know the will of God for our life. We're scared that he's going to do something in our life, you know. But that's not what God, he, he doesn't save you to, to make you miserable. He doesn't call you somewhere to make you miserable. Listen, we have hardships in life. But being in the center of God's will 
is the greatest place you could ever be this morning. Doing what God wants you to do is the greatest thing you could ever know in your life. Now, the reason most do not know his will is they're not willing to do what God wants him to do. God will not show you his will if you're not willing to do it. Think about that. As you're traveling life's road, Lord, show me your path for my life. And then, Lord, teach me your paths, your will for my life. You know, most people do it this way. Lord, I want your will to be done in my life. And, Lord, if you show me your will and I approve of it, if I like it, Lord, then I'm going to do it. Hmm. If I ask you what God's will is for your life, what would it be? You don't take a pencil and paper and say, Lord, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Three choices, Lord, I want you to do in my life. And then you sign your name to it. No. What you need to do is give him the blank sheet of paper with your name already signed and say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. You see the difference? Most of us are like the first one. Lord, I want to be in the center of your will, but Lord, I'm not sure I can trust you. So show it to me first, and if I like it, then I'll do it. Undertaking of God's will must be determined if you're going to have a successful Christian Walk with God. You see now, the, for the psalmist, once God showed him the path, it would be the one he would take. After we find God's will, we must follow it. Now, let me tell you about my life. I was in Fargo, North Dakota, on a mission up there to preach a revival. I didn't know exactly what God was doing in my life. I was leading singing that week, but I knew that God was dealing with me because I felt his spirit all over me. And I got on that plane with a preacher and a couple of more guys in our church that were going to help in the revival that week, and I couldn't think of nothing funny to say. I always had something going on. I sat there and looked out to the window, and I kept thinking, God, what in the world am I doing up here? That night in the hotel, I was a miserable person. But I happened to be rooming with my pastor, and I said, he said, Booney, he said, I want to ask you something. What's on your mind? I said, nothing's on my mind. He said, oh, yes, there is. You can't hide it. You haven't been the same since you left. And I said, you know, Jim, I said, I don't know what's going on, but God is trying to tell me something. And he said, well, just surrender to it. And I was thinking like you, like most people, but what if I don't like it? See, we're all human, aren't we? And he said, well, you know what? If you don't like it, you're going to be the miserable person in the world, the most miserable person. He said, because if God wants you to do something and you don't want to do it, you're rejecting the best for your life. 
Because God only wants the best for your life. Now, do you believe that? And I said, yeah, I believe that. I know he only wants the best for my life. Then he said, well, give him your life. And I kept thinking, but I want my life to do what I want to do. He said, give him your life. All of it. And oh, I tell you, I got on my knees and I prayed. And when I got up, I had a peace. Boy, it's just like the light. Come on, and the burdens were lifted. He said, now call your wife and tell her. Oh, ho, ho, ho. no, they ain't calling her and tell her. Call your wife and tell her. Well, he was messing where he shouldn't have messed with. Preachers always do that, don't they? And I said, okay, I'm calling my wife. And I called her, and I told her, and she said, I thought you ought to be doing that years ago. I said, man, you're not helping the situation one bit. <laughs> but when I got back home, I'm like most people. I said, well, I don't like that. I'm not going to do it. And you know what? I was miserable. I was a miserable person. They wasn't going to tell nobody. He wasn't going to tell nobody. I was just going to be miserable. And the day that I said, Lord, I will do it. I'll make it public. Again, he took that burden off of me. And you know what? It's been the best years of my life. The best years. 30, about 38 years now. It has been great it's not all been pleasant, but with God leading and God guiding, it has been the greatest 38 years of my life. And you know what? It doesn't matter what I do because I know God's guiding. That's what the psalmist said. Lord, show me your ways and teach me your will or path. And unless we are committed to keeping the Lord's commandments, there's little point in asking him for guidance. You see? Ephesians 6, 6, Paul speaks of doing the will of God from the heart. And that word doing has the ideal of fulfilling and abiding in his will. Do you know God's path this morning for your life? That's the question. Are you doing the will of God from the heart? Not out of the mind, not just trying to work and make it through. Show me your ways. Teach me your paths. If we want God's leadership, we must do what he asks us to do in our life. And be willing to do it. And then he says, lead me in your truth. Now, the psalmist desired to know God's word. Now listen, friends. That must be in every one of us hearts, a desire to understand God's word. Jesus said in John 17, thy word is truth. Truth means it's reliable. It's dependable. God's word is absolutely trustworthy. I trust it with all my heart. What the Word says, that's truth. There's not one error in this Bible. There's not one mistake in the Bible. Just because I can't understand some of it doesn't mean it's a mistake. You better trust it whether you understand it or not. And I believe if you ask God to show you, He will let you understand that. The psalmist had no doubt about the trustworthiness of God's word. He asked God to show me the truth. And that means enlightenment. When he says teach me, enlighten me, or instruct me. God instruct me in your truth. He wanted the knowledge of God's word and what it said. And he said this. Teach me and lead me in your truth. Now, I said something about this last week. In most churches, the average person doesn't know anything about the Word of God. We don't study it enough to know the Word of God. We come 
most, uh, most, most come just to church. If you was in Bible study this morning, praise God for you. If you picked up that book, praise God for you. Study that lesson, praise God for you. You know, if I asked people in here to turn to Exodus or Genesis, you might find those two. If I ask you about Jonah or Habakkuk, uh, uh, you might not know where those were found. You would probably have to turn in your Bible and look and see if there was a, such a book and what page it's on. If I ask you the four Gospels, I wonder if you could name them. If I ask you, can you list at least five of the Ten Commandments? Most church people can't do that. Isn't that sad? And yet, we want revival? People misquote the Word of God all day long. If I asked you, does the Bible say money is the root of all evil? Don't raise your hand. But some of you would say yes. That's what the Bible says. Money is the root of all evil. You'd be embarrassed because that's not what the Bible says. God helps those who help themselves. You've heard that, amen? That's not biblical. God helps those who surrender themselves to Him. But you know, we don't know what the Bible says, so when somebody on television says, hey, man, the Bible says this, you, we just take it for granted. Say, oh man, yeah, he's preaching. He's going to preach the truth. I know he's, he's a preacher. And let me tell you something. They're being led astray. The Bible says, let nobody deceive you. In the last days, there's going to be many people that are deceived. And I believe every Christian should have a decent knowledge of the Word of God because the Bible is true. It is truth. It is the Word of God. And we need to trust it and believe it in our heart, folks. We need that in our church. And then he says, not only that, enable me. Lead me in that truth. I believe God wants to guide you into truth. You see, life is a difficult journey. And we cannot make it successfully on our own. Many have tried. And many have failed. Every page of the Word of God. Man, we can just find truth for our life. You know what? I found these. I wrote these down. If you're impatient, sit down and talk to Job. If you, you know what who Job is? All right. If you're strong-willed, talk to Moses. If you're weak need, then talk to Elijah. If the song in your heart is faint, talk to David. If you lose perspective, look at Isaiah. If you need to come out of the chill, let the beloved disciple put his arm around you. If your faith is failing, talk to Paul. And if you're lazy, see James. And if you look, lose sight of the future, read Revelation. You see? The Bible is more than a book. The Bible is God's living word. And we need more than just a head knowledge of the Bible. And until you ask God to show you the path and teach you the path and lead you in the truth and teach me, then you'll not benefit from it. You need to get into the word of God. Find his will for your life. For these things you need as you travel down life's highway. We sing the song, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. 
but to trust and obey. If we want to be happy and never pick it up, And it's never going to do what it was intended to do until we get it into our heart and live it. The psalmist wanted to learn what God said. And he wanted to walk in the truths of God. And he wanted the Lord to show him his word that he might live in the truth of it. Folks, if you're not saved this morning, the Bible says first, God's will is that you come to know him. As Savior, the Bible says, He willeth none should perish, but that all should come to eternal life. If you want Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is come to Him. Say, Lord, I realize I'm a sinner. I need you as a Savior because why? You died on the cross for me. You paid my price. You want to give me eternal life? And I believe you died for me. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to turn my life around and give it to you. Man, I tell you what. He will come into your life. He will save you. And he will change you. Get into the word of God. Start praying. Show me your way, O oh Lord, for my life. Teach me your paths for my life. And lead me in the truth that I might understand your words. Those three things the psalmist said we need. And I believe we need them in our churches today. We have so many people falling away. Did you know what? Baptists are leaving the Baptist churches and going to Mormon churches. Man, let me tell you something. If you're a Mormon in here today, you need to get your life saved. That's just the way it is. They're a false church. Man, I could go on and say a bunch of others. The Catholic Church. Oh, that's pretty close. I still believe it's a false church. Folks, if you don't believe it, you get into the Word of God and find out what the Word of God says, and then you get into their doctrines. You see? see you don't know if I'm telling the truth or not, do you? I'm telling you the truth. It's right here in the Word of God. You get into what the Word of God says and learn it and say, Lord, show me your will for my life. Get your life saved. You know what? Christ was willing to do that this morning. And then follow his will for your life. Right now, some of you need a church home and you're looking for a church home. I'd love to have you here. If God leads you here, I would love to have you. We're growing together. We have Sunday night service, folks. Some of you may not believe that. Some of our own members don't know that. They'll catch that in a little while. We have Wednesday night service. Man, what in the world are y'all doing up on Wednesday night? We're studying the Word of God. See? You desire to learn the Word of God, you've got to come to Bible study. You've got to come to hear it preached and taught. You know why a lot of Baptists are going to Mormon churches and other things? Because they don't know the Word of God. And they're being led astray by this nice family man who believes in God. Oh, they'll tell you all about family. I know I've got some of them in my family. It's sad. Show me. Teach me and lead me. If that's what you want God to do in your life this morning, he will. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much today that we have a decision to make. Lord, some of us need to come to Christ. Some of us need to get into the Word of God. Some of us need to say, Lord, show me your way for my life and be willing to do it give you that piece of paper and let you fill in what you want us to do and then let's do it. Lord, if, if there's someone here that needs to make a decision for you, I pray this morning 
they'll come. If there's somebody here that's a member and they need to get into perfect will, let them come and just kneel at the altar and say, Lord, here's my life. I want you to show me, teach me, and lead me this morning so that I might be successful in the Christian walk. And Lord, there's some here looking for a church home. Lord, I pray that they might come and join in, but only if you lead them. For it's in your precious name we ask these things. Amen.